Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Tainted Grail. Whoa, I promise I won't do that all the way through. This is a game about exploration and survival in a, a dying world. Really? We'll get into the story in just a second. I recommend you turn on the Klingon subtitles. If I've made any mistakes, they will hopefully be corrected there. And I don't know why I'm doing that gesture early. There is a handheld and a static camera. The options are in the description to switch between at your leisure. So here is the world as it starts. There is a min here. We will find out all about this in the letter I am about to read you. I am Bior. I am a blacksmith's apprentice who may just be destined for greater things. Now every character gets a map. Now this was made a long time ago and we don't know how accurate it is. We're over here. We are standing in uh, Kuanakt farmland right now. But yeah, hopefully we'll uh, we'll find our way through all of this. Not in this playthrough, of course. This game is huge and played over lots of different chapters. We'll see how much of chapter one we can get through. But we also get a letter each that kind of sets up our personal story. So let's have a look through mine now. Bior, you were always a good lad and a great help. I would have closed the forge long ago if not for the strength of your arms and your resolve. I feel I owe you something. When I told you to stay in Kuanakt to keep an eye on my property, I misguided you. The forge is already lost, just like the rest of our land. The sagas of old are true. Our island once belonged to twisted immortal powers. It was not a place for humans. But Arthur, the first of the kings, who landed on these shores with our people, subdued Avalon inch by inch. He took the grail from the four dwellers and used it to bring seasons and cycles known from our world to this godless place. We all thought the men here in our village was raised to immortalise this. The truth is, it was created to keep these ancient powers at bay. Now the men here go dark. Something is broken. Spring will not come. The animals won't breed. Lord Yvain secretly gathered the five strongest and wisest people of Kuanakt, including me. He leads us east to seek help in Camelot before it's too late, before the land starts sinking into the weirdness. If we don't return, it means we have failed, and the fate of Kuanakt falls to you. Yvain didn't want you with us due to your lack of experience and short temper, but I've always believed in you, lad. Save our people, or, if you cannot, try to save yourself. And that's from Ephir, the Forge Master of Kuanakt. So that's that's who I am and basically where we are. So this world is dying. These men here that we thought were symbols of excellence are actually just kind of keeping all of this nastiness at bay. And this world that we shouldn't really be in is uh, probably trying, not going to want us to be here any longer once these men here disappear. Now they are on timers in a solo game, which is what I'm playing today, although it's, it's going to show you the, the broad strokes of what it would be at any player count. There are some differences, like you can do actions collectively and combat collectively as a party and stuff like that. But the broad strokes of doing the actions and uh, having encounters and stuff is exactly the same. There are going to be spoilers. This is chapter one of the game. I There is plenty in the game, though. It's not like I'm going to spoil all of it for you. But uh, yeah, bear that in mind that there will be story stuff. So let's have a look at the round overview then, because we do have some admin to do, not very much in the first day because a lot of it doesn't apply. So at the start of the day, we need to remove expired Minhirs and uh, discard locations out of their range. Uh, the range of a min here is one around it, orthogonally and diagonally. So these locations can stay because they're within one of an active min here. Reduce all time and Minhir dials. So if we just look up close here, we can see that uh, for a one player game, this is set to eight days. I have eight days to, uh, well, to what? We'll find out. <laughs> to do something. Reveal the next event card. This is going to tell us what for. So I revealed the first thing. The setup card told me to how to set up the event deck. It's just the different parts of chapter one to begin with, but uh, the event deck can change. So what have we got here? So this is ancient knowledge. Place this card on top of the active quest pile because we can see there's a quest on it. This isn't just a one and done event. There is uh, something to do. The time is short. The guardian man here that has been protecting your town since the ancient days is about to go dark. Rumour has it that there's a secret druidic ritual that may help you rekindle the Minhirs. You must explore the locations surrounding Kunak to find it. Quest. Earn a Minhir right secret card. To do so, you will have to explore the locations surrounding Kunak. And it tells us what to do if we manage to get that done. If this is your first game, try to return to Kunak at the end of this day and have a dream there, because dreams often contain hints. So that's over in the active quest pile now. We will be coming back to that, I'm sure. One thing that we were told in the setup, though, for this chapter is uh, you might want to have your first action be exploring your location. 
because uh, the rest of this, by the way, we don't need to do. Move Guardians, there aren't any of those yet. Pick Active Item and Secret Cards. We don't have any item or secret cards. So now we are in the day. Players perform actions, one, one each in any order. And here are the actions here, but we can just go straight to Explore. It recommended we explore, so let's do it. It's going to cost one energy. That's what that symbol means, one and then energy. And to do it, we flip our location card and read the text on the other side. It will often refer you to the Exploration Journal. It's talking about energy. This is my character board. I have energy, health, and terror. You see, I have no terror at the moment. I am full of beans. I have six energy. And I have full health as well, nine health. Now, you see that the health is in this uh, special little plastic T here because your health is kind of a limit to everything else. As I lose health, my energy and terror can't go above this. And if my terror does go above that, it will uh, really hamper me in encounters. But for now, though, I can just spend the one energy to explore. And so, you know, it's it said flip over the card. Now, to save you kind of disturbing all of the contents, the exploration journal here does have the back of the cards in it everywhere. But as well as this, we do have an app, the Tainted Grail Companion, that's uh, even better because, you know, you, you can't skip ahead to different things and uh, accidentally cheat or you know, see the results of things ahead. And it stops you accidentally skipping things that you uh, need to know. So let's have a look at the app now. It normally has lovely music that I have cruelly muted. So we type in, we are at location 101. So I can go. And what happens at Kunakt Farmhold? A deep feeling of loss fills everything in Kunakt, from dilapidated farms to the sunken eyes of those who remain in town. The men here in the market is all but extinguished, and everyone brave or resourceful enough has left to find a solution. So before we pick any action, do you have the Winds of Weirdness status or the Hunter's Mark status? Now this is referring to our save sheet here that we get as a party. Uh, the other side of it shows you all these different statuses that you might earn throughout the game. As we haven't done anything yet, we haven't got any of those statuses. And the other thing is talking about a secret card. We haven't got any of that yet, so we don't need to worry about any of those options. So we can scroll past them. And so we can pick an action. Do we visit the families of the champions from the first expedition? If you're able to find them, knowing more about them might help. Ask the townsfolk to help you prepare. Rest for the day in your own home. Wander the alleys twisted by the weirdness, but you can only do that if the men here is not in this location, and it is. Or we can leave. Exploration ends. So we don't want to end the exploration, do we? So I think I want to visit the families of the champions from the first expedition. So let's press that option. This long winter, nearly everyone here lost a friend or a family member, first to hunger, then to disease. Finally, the five remaining pillars of the community, the only heroes this land had ever known, suddenly left. Now, when you look into the distant eyes of the last remaining residents, you realize they want to forget. So we have some actions to choose from here. We can loosen their tongues with mead. There is an old custom, a late night wake for those who wandered far from their home. Holding it for everyone who left with the expedition won't be cheap, though. Now, I do have uh, some food and a tiny bit of wealth, so maybe I could pick that. Ask them to share their burdens, or we just leave. So I haven't got that much money, so maybe we should ask them to share their burdens. So this requires one, and then there's this little dove symbol over here. So we can switch back to my player board, and you can see either side all of these different attributes. We have aggression, courage, practicality, spirituality, caution, and empathy. See, the empathy has got that same dove symbol on there. So if I have one empathy, then I can choose that option. I don't have an empathy. Beor does not start off with any empathy whatsoever, so we just can't choose that option. Okay then, so we're going to have to reject that and go for loosen their tongues with me then. Let's just see how much this is gonna cost me. So pay one wealth or one food. So back at the player board, I do have, I've only got one wealth, but I've got three food. So I think I'm gonna pay a food. These cubes, by the way, are just, you know, generic markers. Where they are defines what, uh, what kind of marker they are. This was a food marker. Now it's just off into the wind. So back to the app, we can pay a wealth, accept. Well, we paid a food, didn't we? It takes a while to break the silence of the grief-stricken people, but when you do, stories of separations and departures flood you like torrential rain. You try to remember every detail, the colour of a palfrey horse on the village priestess Neante Road, the ornament on the hauberk the young Lord Evain wore, the strange drinking horn Erfir the smith used to lug around, the birthmark of Fael, the master huntsman, the embroidered cape of Orbert, the seasoned traveller who'd seen all parts of the island. Who knows what detail can help you down the road? So we continue, gain part one of the fate of the expedition status. Exploration ends. 
So you remember that big list of statuses that I told you about? Uh, you just cross off what it just told you. And this says when you have parts one to eight of this status, you go to the Book of Secrets, a certain part in that. Uh, but we've got uh, part one of it for now, which isn't too bad, is it? So our exploration ended. We're going to have to do another action if we want to choose any of those other options. But you know, your, your next action that we can choose is travel. So I think we should try and travel. So we can move to any revealed location connected to your current one. You can never move diagonally, by the way. You can only move orthogonally. So, you know, up, down, left, right. Uh, but we, it costs us one energy to do that. I think we're going to do it. So I'm going to spend an energy and let's see where we want to go. We might have to move the min here out of the way. We have forlorn swords where the smith's shop is. So we can pay some wealth to draw an item. There are also, you know, we don't know what's on the other side of these cards by exploring them. This is just the action of that location. Maybe give us some idea. The charred conclave where just by going there, this lightning bolt symbol means it will happen when you travel there. Uh, draw a grey encounter when you enter this location. Oh, I've just knocked a load of cubes about uh, with a flourish. Uh, the warrior fair, I can do a combat trial there. It costs a lot of energy and costs me a health, but I can get an XP once per day. That's not too bad because XP is uh, how you progress and get new skills and things. Might get some empathy. Uh, or we can go to the hunter's grove where we can, for two energy, gather food, gain two food and draw a green encounter. I like the sound of that. Now we do have as well these different symbols on the top of the card. We have an icon glossary here that tells us about them. So uh, Kurnacht here, this symbol means that we'll have dreams here if we're here at night. And you remember, it, it did tell us that in the quest as well as a hint. Uh, it's a friendly settlement, so that's important for different things. Remember, it's a, it's a settlement. I will not remember. I haven't told you about this yet. <laughs> I have a special ability as Bior. I can do an action for four energy. If I'm in a settlement, only if I'm in a settlement, I can draw uh, craftable items and pick one. But uh, I, I don't want to do that just yet. And the final one means that there is a there's uh, there can be a min here here. And that's going to be weird to say, isn't it? And there is normally. It's just in my way. So I'm just uh, moving it off to the side a little bit. So yes, we're going to go to Hunter's Grove because I've just spent a food. I wouldn't mind getting some back. So when we go over here, we can see that the next uh, step of the action, check if this reveals any new locations. So locations are revealed if there are arrows showing that there are locations adjacent to this one. So there are ones to the left and right and above as well. Well, I should probably use in cardinal directions saying north and uh, east and west, shouldn't I? Uh, but also, they need to be within one range, remember, of them in here. So only these two will be revealed, 106 and 107. So I've just grabbed those out of the box. We've got the four dweller mounds. So here we can go on a treasure hunt, or we can go to the whitening to the east over there, and uh, you get encounters. You can trade with the townsfolk, uh, pay food and get wealth over there as well. So we're at the Hunter's Grove. I think I would like to gather some food so I can spend two energy. So let's spend two energy. I'm down to two now. And yeah, I gain two food and then I need to draw an encounter, which is very convenient. I get to show you an encounter quite early. It's almost as if I did that on purpose so I could do that. So normally we are told by the setup card which kind of encounters to have in these decks based on the player count and the chapter that we're on. But also, there are these your first encounter decks that you can put on if this is your very first game. I have just put them on here, so I'm going to draw a green encounter. We know what it's going to be, basically. It's always going to be this one if it's your first encounter card. But it's got these helpful little tool tips on it to uh, guide us through. So what does all of this mean? We found a mist-shaped vermin. It's got an encounter value of four, so we need to have four cubes in our combat pool over here to win this battle. We have attribute keys, and you see that they relate to our attributes on our character here. And one relates to magic. We don't have any magic, so we can disregard that one. And we have a combat table here that shows what the enemy's going to do on their turn. And if we win, we can loot one food. So what do we do from here? We have a combat deck that is uh, 15 cards to begin with, all shuffled up. We draw three of them at the start of combat. And these are going to give us different symbols that we can manipulate to try and achieve victory. We do also have a combat overview, so let's just uh, make sure that we're doing all of the steps here. So, starting the encounter, draw three cards from the combat deck, check the enemy traits, the enemy doesn't have any, and then we pick the active character. It's only me, so it's gonna be me for this. And then character activation. Are there any delayed abilities? We'll see those shortly. 
play cards or receive an opportunity attack. We can try and run away, but we, if we don't play any cards, we resolve the opportunity attack, which is the enemy will run away. Uh, it's, ju it's just a rat, isn't it? So we can try and defeat it, though. So you see, the cards that I have drawn have got different symbols on their sides here, and so this one isn't a great example to play just yet. So it, it, it's basically, it's repositioned. This is a way of, of running off. If you escape from combat, ignore the opportunity attack. I can redraw. If I don't like any of these, I can redraw and draw one less, so I'd only get two of them. But I think we can do something with these cards. So let's have a look. We have Grapple, which means... Now, it's, it's got two different symbols on it. It's got an enemy action symbol. So when the enemy takes its turn, we resolve this text. If you receive any damage, discard the last card from the sequence. It's also got a delayed ability on it of gain three cues. We only need four to win. The trouble is that if the rat has got naught to two cubes on it, it's going to attack me. And if this is the last card out, this will get removed from the sequence. But... Yeah, if, if, if I cover it up, you can end up overlaying these cards. If I cover it up, it won't have this uh, delayed ability anymore. So that's probably not a great thing to play just yet. I could play Ignore Pain. On the enemy's turn, I gain a cube for every point of damage I receive. So that could be something to think about. But I, I think, first of all, I'm going to play Grapple. Now, when these cards are pushed together, you can see that the symbols match up. So if you have one of these attributes, then you perform the icon that it's connected to. So do I have any aggression? Yes, I have at least one aggression. So that means I earn a cube. I earn a combat cube. I need four of those to win the combat. So there we go. Nothing for this one. Now, do I have practicality? Yes, I've got one practicality. So I can draw a new card, which is good because uh, I could use that right now if it's uh, useful to me. And down here, this always gets activated. Unfortunately, the card I've played doesn't have anything matching up to it. So now... Oh, wow, I could win this combat, I think, straight away. Because this final blow card is perfect for me. Yeah. So I, I could play... Oh, no, it isn't. I can't play it. Oh, it would be brilliant next turn. So to be able to play another card, you'll see this brown symbol over here, which is basically play more cards. You need to match this up to a symbol to be able to play another card. I don't think I can play another one this turn. That matches up to nothing, the, the extra cards. Oh, this one has. So I could play an extra card here. If I played this one... Yeah, this one doesn't match up either, by the way. But now I've played that one. Let's see. I, I would be allowed to play this if I had courage. I've got one courage, so that's not too bad. But what's better is, yes, final blow. I have an aggression, so that means that I can put two cubes out. I have a courage, and that most importantly means that I'm allowed to play another card. If I were to spend a magic... I can put another cube out. I don't have any magic, so unfortunately that's not an option for me. And then the always on portion of the card means that I gain another cube. So this is, a, is only, you know, my first encounter. So it's uh, meant to be pretty easy. If the enemy got a turn, it would lose two cubes and do an extra damage to me. But luckily, it isn't even going to get a turn. Thanks to drawing that extra card. Thanks to drawing that final blow. That was uh, a really good draw. So, uh, yeah, in, if I was able to play another card... Now, this has got nothing here, so I just can't play another card. It is the final blow, after all. Uh, you know, the normally always-on section has got a cross in it, which means just nothing else this turn. We would resolve the enemy's turn, so based on the number of cubes he had, he would do something. If I had any abilities here that relate to the enemy's turn, it would do something, and then we would go for another round of combat. But as it is, that's it. I shuffle all the cards that I had into my combat deck again. I need to gain a food. So now I have got uh, five food, actually. I was just going to sneak that in the wealth before I realized. So we have resolved the encounter. We've had the food. And we haven't even lost a health. So I think we might push on a little bit longer. Because, you know, normally being exhausted isn't that awful. I have two energy left. Why aren't I using it? Well, 
Beor has a mysterious festering wound. And every time I become exhausted, I lose a health. But I think that's that's okay. We can, we can deal with one health. I would like to explore where I am. Now, I am going to have a dream here. Unfortunately, I could go back, but I want to keep exploring, I think. I just fancy it. So we're going to come over to Explore Hunter's Grove. So that's going to be location 102. Go. Hunter's Grove, it's still here as always. Enormous empty eye sockets start to watch you as soon as you descend into the moss-covered basin. The horns as wide as a long ship are now a home for countless birds. Inside the vast skull lies a quiet candlelit shrine with several straw mattresses strewn about. The local hunters call this ancient skull the Stagfather and lay charms and offerings around it. The legends say the Stagfather takes the dreamers away to join him on a great hunt. So check before action. If you don't have the tracker status, so we, we know that we only have that one uh, Fate of the Expedition status, we don't have the tracker status, so we have to select this option. A trail of blood and broken branches is not unusual in the sacred forest of the Great Hunter. You almost pass it without noticing, when an imprint of a bloodied hand on a white birch's bark catches your attention. This prey certainly wasn't an animal. So do we follow the trail, or carry on and make another choice? Well, we can't make another choice, so let's just follow the trail. Gain the tracker status. Aha! So we can come back to the party sheet here, and we have gained the tracker status. For all the good that's going to do us. A tangle-haired bow maiden lies hidden deep in the briars, clenching her pierced gut. It looks like the hunter became the prey. Judging by the bow maiden's hisses and curses, there's still some fight in her. You approach regardless. Her wound looks beyond your help. There's only one place where they can tend to injuries like this, the island asylum off the coast to the south, but it's a long trek to save a bloodthirsty servant of the Stagfather. Place a time token on the dial and set it to two. This dial moves with your character model. As long as you have the dial, add one energy to every cost you pay. When the dial ticks down to zero, discard it. This will make the task impossible to complete. You can also voluntarily discard the dial at any time. New task, bring the wounded bow maiden to the island asylum and explore the asylum to find help for her. Exploration ends. Okay. Well, that changes things somewhat, doesn't it? Well, it doesn't change things. It gives me uh, a bit of a, a, a direction because, uh, yeah, well, we, we know it's told us to the south. The coast to the south. This could be the coast. And this could be the coast. So which way is it? So I was going to go to whitening and do stuff. So if, if my, I need a dial, don't I? I need a dial set to two and put a time token on it because, you know, when the round tracker says do the things with time tokens on, we tick this down. So it's pointing at two at the moment. And as it uh, ticks down, this, this is basically the, the, the woman's life. So we're going to have to try and save it. I've only got one energy, so that's not enough to do anything. Since the costs of everything I want to do are increased by one, I can inspect them in here. But uh, yeah, it's, that's not where I am. I can, I'm going to have to pass them. End your day. You can't perform actions until the start of next day. So what do we do at the end of the day? Rest, consume a food. I'm going to do that, no problem. Consume one of my five food to gain a health and lose a terror. I haven't got any terror. If you don't have enough food, drop your energy to zero. If it was already at zero, lose a health. Uh, restore your energy to full. No problem. Back to six. If you're exhausted, you only get four instead. Ah, so that's the downside of what I did there. Saying uh, <laughs> it's, it's losing health and stuff. But yeah, I, I wanted to explore that place. Uh, advance your character by spending XP. So I haven't earned any XP, so that's going to be tough. Modify your decks. Haven't had anything to change them with. If you're in a location with the dream icon, read the dream. I am in a location with a dream, so let's go back to the app and press the dream icon. If you have part two of the morning song status, your sleep is dreamless tonight. Otherwise, read on. You drift off under this ochre-painted constellation into a restless sleep where you chase a young dove in the hills just outside Kurnacht. You wake early in the morning in a cold sweat with several fresh cuts. The taste of blood fills your mouth. Beside you, raw pieces of meat lay carefully wrapped in leaves. If you don't have the Hunter's Mark status, each character gains two food. Brilliant. Then gain the Hunter's Mark status. Okay, so we found a Hunter called Mark, and he's left us some lovely food. What could be wrong with that? Hunter's Mark. No problem. Okie doke. 
So that's not too bad, is it? What a lovely dream. But that's not going to happen again. Remember, it said uh, if, you, if you have the Hunter's Mark, your sleep is dreamless. So if you're going insane, you get a nightmare instead. But we're not going insane just yet. Start the next day, go back to stage one. So we haven't got any expired min here's. Reduce all time and min here dials. So this one ticks down to one. So yeah, it's going to be rough getting over there, I think. Oh, I wish I'd waited. A if I'd waited a turn, if I'd just gone there and had the dream and not exhausted myself, I would be back with six. I would explore now and have five. And then I could do a couple of explorations and it would only tick down to one the next day. But as it is, it's going to tick down to zero tomorrow morning, which discards it and uh, I assume she dies. I haven't got enough, uh, enough energy to, to do anything with that. I can only get down here and we know that's not the asylum. One of these is. So unfortunately, that's going to have to be a secret for another time. Which is frustrating, because <laughs> that happened when we played this chapter, and uh, yeah, I still don't know what that leads to, because uh, we found it too late there as well. I was, uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't think it was there, but yeah, I was hoping to find that again and solve it, but no, it's going to have to happen another time. So I think we're just going to willfully discard that, as, uh, as, as callous as that seems to do. We, we can't do anything, we just can't get there, but at least I'd be able to do some actions now. So what else can we get by exploring the Hunter's Grove now that we're here? So it's going to cost an energy to do that. We do have the tracker status, so we, uh, we, we don't select that option. Uh, sleep in the shrine, dig through the offerings, deface the shrine, and leave a message to other hunters. Uh, I wouldn't mind having a dig through the offerings. Let's see what they've left. Clearly, if they left their coins here, they didn't want them anymore, right? If you don't have part five of the pillager status, I'm pretty sure I don't, select this option. Okay. Gain one wealth, gain part five of the pillager status. So I'll just scribble that in. Each party member with one, which is the owl spirituality or more, gains a terror. I don't have any spirituality. So yes, I, I don't mind doing these terrible things, apparently. Exploration ends. Okie doke. So we could do some more exploring here, but I think we need to get moving. This is going to be a bit of a wasted day, isn't it? I do. Uh, I apologize for that min here. I, I don't think I ticked the uh, min here down, actually. I was so involved with the time token and everything, and we didn't do an event. Oh, no. Re rewind all of this stuff. I was so heartbroken that I don't get to find any secrets that, yes, we need to read the next event. Homeless vagabonds roam the roads and trails. Many hail from fishing villages further west, where the last min here's went dark weeks ago. Though malformed and sick, they're the lucky ones. Their tales chill you to the bone. Is this the fate that awaits your land? Help the refugees. Each player may spend a wealth or a food to gain a rep and an XP. I will do that. I've got loads of food. Uh, so gain a rep and an XP. Uh, place five minus one per player. Uh, so that's four additional random events on top of the event deck and then discard this card. Okay, then. So I've got a big deck of random events here. Shuffle these up and put four on top. It basically gives me more time. Okay, normal service can resume. So I probably don't want to exhaust myself so that I can have uh, six for next time. I don't want to dream here again, do I? Let's go over to whitening. Because, yes, we can go over here. So tick me down to two energy because now I can draw a blue encounter and show you one of those. Let's have a look. Is this the... Yes, this is the diplomacy one. So the other first encounters are that vermin again. So I'm just going to get rid of these because we've seen that now. Let's see something different next time we have an encounter. So this is the example for a diplomacy check. For diplomacy events, so we've encountered a suspicious guard and he's going to need some convincing to, uh, to let us past. So we have an affinity track here. Uh, we put a marker on it right in the center, the gray square. And, oh, it even tells us that in the start bit there. The affinity track. If the marker is on top during the affinity check, you win. If it's on the bottom, you lose. There are different stages of diplomacy checks. This one's just got one stage. And the rest we'll see as we go along. So let's have a look here. The same as combat, I have a diplomacy deck. And we can have a look at the diplomacy overview. Uh, draw three cards from your diplomacy deck. So one two, three. I have backtrack, bribery, and show off. See, I counted way too quickly there, <laughs> drawing those cards. Uh, pick the active character. Uh, I pick me. Uh, there are no delayed abilities yet, so play your cards. Right. So, 
We are looking for this symbol. We can see that this symbol causes the arrow to go up. When it's the enemy's turn, the cube is going to go down. So I can play this. This will just let me play an extra card. And if when played, this symbol means if the affinity is not green, it goes up. That would that wouldn't be too bad to play first up. But yeah, it, it's got the play one more card symbol. And so probably best to wait on that one. What about this one here? Show off. I do have. No, now this is the this is the right hand side, isn't it? Diplomacy is the stuff I haven't got. I've only got caution. So that would do nothing. This would make it go up and I would lose a health. And if this card gets discarded, we can go up as, again as well. So that would make it go up by one. We could play bribery if I'm okay to give up a wealth. Now I'm allowed to play that because I have got one caution. Uh, so when played, you may pay a wealth to discard an item to go up twice. But if this goes, if uh, if this card gets discarded, I lose a rep. I feel like that's a good way to go because we can just win the encounter again. Again, this is just a my first encounter, so we can do it quite quickly. But yeah, it's going to cost me a wealth or discard an item. I don't have an item, so it's going to cost me a wealth to do that to to bribe this guard. And for bribing the guard, my reward is a reputation. If I'd failed, I would have lost that reputation. So I don't, I didn't want to do that. So uh, yes, let's gain that rep. I could have gone on and it would have been a bit of a tug of war, but I think that was a nice effective way of ending that encounter pretty quickly. So again, my diplomacy deck would need shuffling. I only have two health. So this is going to be a, a very short day, isn't it? I'm going to end it now before I am exhausted. So at the end of the day, I need to rest, consume a food to restore a health. Uh, reset your energy to full. I wasn't exhausted. Advance your character by spending XP. I only have one XP. So the where is the card with the... Here we go, character advancement. Character advancement is a minimum of two XP. And then you can, uh, you can get new cards from your advancement pool. Uh, or you can gain your first point in a pair of attributes. Now, pairs of attributes are horizontally here. So aggression and empathy are a pair. Courage and caution practicality and spirituality so i i don't get the first point in any of these pairs i've got at least a point in every pair so the cheapest for me to get a new attribute would be the second point in one of the pairs because i only have one each here i could get some spirituality they could give me some flexibility in a diplomacy encounter so that's that's going to be the end of the day isn't it we have uh, restored the thing we aren't spending xp yet we are in a location with a dream icon so let's have a lovely dream your dream of home is understandable, considering for the first time in your life you've wandered so far from it. But why is everyone talking and walking backward? Ooh, so we don't—we haven't had a nightmare. We don't have to worry about that. Twin Beaks. So we can we can go out of that for now. We don't read that text until we have explored the location. So now it's time to start the next day. But I think. We will leave it there for part one. We've had a couple of days. We've seen moving, exploring, combat and diplomacy. Uh, there is more, of course, to see. Uh, join me for the next part where we will see what's going on in whitening and see if we can get to the bottom of this Menhir situation. If you'd like to support the channel, please spread the word, like, subscribe. Uh, there is a Patreon if you would like to contribute there and you get to vote on videos and get your name in credits and stuff. But either way, I will see you for the next game. Bye, everyone.